Running parallel to the western coast of the Indian Peninsula, the Western Ghats are a 180,000 square kilometer chain of towering mountains, winding rivers, open grasslands, and dense forests. The Ghats are one of the most biodiverse places in the world. Here, an intricate relationship between land, human and animal has existed for centuries. Competition for resources is on the rise. Fueled by the exponential growth of population in the region. This has led to the destruction of several important habitats, upsetting the delicate ecological balance that has existed for millennia. Critical Ecosystem Partnership Fund, CEPF, along with Ashoka Trust for Research in Ecology and the Environment, ATRI, have created a funding mechanism with the name to provide incremental support for biodiversity conservation around protected areas, to enhance habitat connectivity and to enable greater civil society participation in existing conservation efforts. ATRI was founded by biologist Dr. Kamaljeet Baba with the mission to promote socially just environmental conservation and sustainable development through research, policy analysis and education. Conservation is a complex problem. We were interested in not only the ecological dimensions of decline in biodiversity, but also the political dimensions, social dimensions, economic dimensions, so we felt that an interdisciplinary approach is needed to the issue of biodiversity conservation. Since its inception, ATRI provided a platform for various players to work under one roof towards strengthening the conservation of the Western Ghats. And in association with the CEPF made possible new partnerships and conservation solutions. Biodiversity was under siege, is still under siege, and governments were only responsible for taking action to conserve biodiversity. A lot of funding was going to governments, and uh, we decided that uh, it would be good to provide a means for civil society to really intervene at a very high level to conserve biodiversity worldwide. CPF was created uh, 15 years ago to really uh, create a, a cadre of, uh, of people who could respond to biodiversity conservation from within the civil society. If you look at the scale of the challenge, the kind of professional conservationists are very few and the problem is very large. So actually the only way conservation and or we can say the sustainable management of natural systems can be achieved at that scale is that we empower and we involve the local people who are living in and around those systems. 
creation of forest reserves had the unintended consequence of disrupting the livelihoods of forest dwelling tribes who depend on forest produce for survival the indian government itself admitted into the supreme court that a historical injustice happened to the community all of indigenous community all over india without setting their right on land and resources and it is there in the preamble of the forest right act while the forest rights act came into effect in 2006 allowing indigenous people to sustainably access the forest resources its implementation has so far remained a challenge grantees have been working towards creating awareness within forest department and indigenous tribes on the workings of the forest rights act enabling the tribes to not only gain knowledge on sustainable collection of forest produce but also become guardians of biodiversity as is the case with the kada tribes of kerala who monitor nesting sites of great hornbills in the forests of karnataka lantana an invasive species of plant has been taking over the natural vegetation also unemployment was high among the forest dwelling tribes in the region a unique green economy model was sought to solve both problems tribal people were employed to make craft items using lantana which they harvest from the forest you need to create a win win relationship between these people and and the conservation effort and that is possible by providing them alternate livelihoods and over a period of time there is a possibility that this will evolve into a stronger relationship where they also start to demonstrate stewardship towards the forest I was expecting to see results in terms of strengthening ecological connectivity at the corridor scale. Actually, where the civil society groups that we've been working with have got a real added value is that they can work outside of the protected areas. They can engage a range of different stakeholders, and they can deliver conservation that complements the work forest department might be doing within the protected areas. Fragmentation of forests due to roads and agriculture. are adversely affecting arboreal endemic species such as the lion-tailed macaques which are being confined to smaller patches of forests grantees are working towards influencing government policies and implementing existing laws on the ground and have been able to create a conservation reserve for the lion-tailed macaques and its habitat all too often we see the management regime within protected areas being focusing on a handful of species typically tiger elephant maybe in some cases gaur so at the end of the day lesser known taxa are critically important because they are the pieces of the ecosystem that underpin life that underpin all that social and economic development known for their scavenging habits and performing the essential function of cleaning up the ecosystem vultures have faced a rapid decline in numbers diclofenac a banned drug used for treating cattle illnesses would instantly kill any vulture feeding on these cattle carcasses lack of awareness meant that the drug continued to be freely sold by pharmacists to cattle owners grantees have successfully educated all stakeholders involved about the existence of the ban and the fatal effects of the drug on vultures this has led to a rise in vulture numbers across the landscape one of the things we've tried to do is raise awareness and raise an um, understanding of the status and the needs and the values of a whole range of other taxa We focused a lot on freshwater taxa, recognizing the fact that freshwater systems are the most fundamental underpinning 
of um, the lives of people in Peninsula India. To build on the existing research and conservation efforts that have been done in the Ghats, an information repository was required. We thought it was necessary for all this information to be available and accessible to a whole variety of people. So we thought as a part of the uh, Western Ghats focused investments that were being made by the Critical Ecosystems Partnership Fund, that information should be easily and openly accessible to everybody for future generations. To address this vacuum, CEPF and ATRI have funded the formation of the Western Ghats Biodiversity Portal, where researchers as well as the general public can freely make available their work and observations from any region of the Ghats. This portal also allows various groups to access and utilize data for future conservation efforts in the region. In the Western Ghats, ATRI and CEPF recognize the important role that people have as custodians of critical ecosystems and the services they provide. To sustain these efforts, local actors will need to continue mobilizing resources involving diverse stakeholders and testing innovative solutions to conservation challenges. CPF is a unique uh, funding mechanism that allows to bring funding to the field, to communities, to individuals, to small NGO or bigger NGO in order to have a very specific action on the ground. So I think that it's highly complementary to what others are doing you know, on a bigger scale. And CPF plays a role of a catalyst it's uh, very often you know, the beginning of the conservation story in a hotspot. The number of organizations we were dealing with increased tremendously. Certainly our interactions with the civil society has been enriched greatly by our experience uh, with the CEPF and also the range of issues you know, that we can address has also increased quite a bit. And I, I think these things can be applied to other parts of the country questions of conservation can't be reduced to a technical solution. They can't be reduced to a purely economic solution or the purely political solution. They require these multiple levels. So bringing people together, having alliances and networks has allowed people to stand side by side and form a community around the conservation in the Western Ghats. And I think ultimately, I would hope that that's our legacy here from this um, CPF program.
Thank you.